Hi, welcome to this talk. Today, we're going to talk about code reviews and how to master, to be efficient in this code practice. My name is Israel. I'm Brazilian, living in the UK. This is my family. Uh, two things that I do like doing games and traveling. And currently, I'm software engineer at Meta. Just a brief introduction. Uh, code review, what is it? It's a process uh, that focuses on examining and reading someone's code. Uh, there are good references in this uh, site that I put. And why do we do code reviews? Well, there's a plenty of reasons. We could do it to discover bugs earlier, improve code quality, enhance security of the code, share knowledge across the team, uh, mentor newer engineers, maintain compliance, and so on. Uh, but also, what's not code review? Well, first, it's not blaming someone's code, shaming someone. It's not also a, an opportunity to show off your amazing engineer, engineering skills. And also, it's not about executing, actually executing the code. It's more about reading, analyzing it, putting comments, and helping the code, the change, to get better. And there are three main approaches to code review. Uh, first is pair programming. So generally, you have two engineers working side by side while one is coding, the other one is observing and giving some comments. Uh, over the shoulder reviews, which usually done after some changes implemented, uh, you do it like live in person or maybe remotely. And another one is Two reviews, you usually, for example, you submit a code review in online pull request and someone checks the code, replies with comments, approving or declining, something like that. Most of the examples and things we'll be talking are more related to the third one, but I believe almost everything could also be applied with, to, the, to any of these approaches. With that said, <clears throat> before actually starting code reviewing the team. We need to do three things. We need to understand the context that we are. First, about the team. So what's the seniority of the team? Is the team composed only by senior engineers who are working in the code base for like five years? Or do we have a lot of junior engineers or newborns, new, new people in the team who are like getting on board there? Uh, what's the familiarity that people have with the code? What's the work dynamics? Are, do people work more independently or do people work more collaboratively in, when building features? What's the communication style of the team? What's the global distribution, time zones? There are many things that could uh, we should take in consideration in the team before setting up the process or before we're trying to establish like some rules around code reviewing. Secondly, we need to look at the code, of course. So what are the coding standards? How, what's the testability of what we already have? What are the riskier paths in the code? Maybe, I don't know, you work in a bank and what's the core banking feature that can't break in any way? Uh, also, for example, maybe you are working on legacy code or you are working on a complete new project. These things do change the dynamics of code reviews in many ways. And third, the goals. So are we trying to find bugs earlier? Are we trying to improve code quality, test coverage? Are we trying to just onboard new engineers and make sure they understand the code base? And what I want to say here is that the goals may change over time. The issues may change over time, and that's OK. We can move the focus of code reviews around. Uh, but I do believe that code review is a process that's important and can help any team in the long term. And it's a process that usually is here to stay. It's implemented to stay, not temporarily. Uh, that said, what is efficient code reviews? How can we do them? Well, I think almost everyone who worked with code reviews saw this and months. Like, you submit 10 line pull requests and you receive 10 comments on how to improve it. But if you submit 500 lines of code, someone replies, yeah, looks good to me, just like, yeah. That's not exactly the most efficient way to do code reviews, of course. So what's code review? First, we have to read carefully, review carefully the code. 
actually read the code. It's not supposed to just skim it through and say, yeah, looks directional right. Uh, we are not trying to be fast. We are trying to be efficient to do it well. Uh, it's not a STEM competition. Uh, so some people try to say, hey, I've revealed 200 uh, reviews and I did 200 reviews in this month or in this week and this year. And I mean, it's not a competition of how much reviews you did and how, actually it's how much you improved the team, the code base, you helped the team to get better. And also, just to be clear, it's not a competition. It's about improving. And when doing any comments, leaving comments, suggestions, we need to be clear, leave actionable comments. If you just say, uh, actually, the code doesn't look good and doesn't give an alternative or a material, let's say, for research to check coding practices that are related to what you are seeing, you are not actually helping the code to get better. You are just creating problems in your team. Uh, also focus on what's important. Uh, I'm not here to say what is important, what is not important, but usually we want to see the functionality of the code. Like, let's say I want to change behavior of A to do B, and in the code, instead of calling B, I'm calling C. That's something I would expect to be caught in the code review, if, of course, there was, it was not caught earlier by the developer with automated tests or something. But what's the design? So is it overall complex? Is it simple enough? Is it too over-engineered? What's the test coverage? Is it being well-tested? Do we have evidence that this code is doing what it did? Uh, some teams, teams have different practices. I know some companies you can only submit code with automated tests back in it. Some companies allow you not submitting anything while some accept manual, manual tests like a video recording on a screenshot. So anyways, what works best for you, it's important to have the test, the evidence. Uh, also, it may be important like the code style, the consistency, the naming, and a lot of other things. And also, it may be important like comments, documentation, and relevance of these things change with the context. And we should be explicit when these things are majorly blocking or the comments are just about minor improvements. Uh, nitpicking, if you don't know, is when you are trying to do like, you do like small suggestions that could be do, done, but it's optional. Usually a good practice, like you write NIT dot dot and put what your suggestion is. So the owner has clear feedback. Hey, okay, this could be improved, but we are happy with the code as it is. So this is a way to do efficiently, to reduce the back and forth of the changes being proposed. Another very important thing is automating anything that's possible to automate. We have like a range of tools. We have auto, auto formatters. We have linters for almost any language that's used in modern software engineers, CI warnings, errors. So it's possible to automate a lot of the work. I remember one project that I worked like many, many years ago. We sometimes had to send back a pull request because the engineer was using tabs instead of spaces and that would be a problem later. I mean, you can have many ways to do that without having a human review to check what which charter was used there. So uh, this is really not a good use of engineer's time. And also one very important thing, code review is not an individual task, an individual effort. It's not just like you individually looking at the code and having the sole responsibility over it. Uh, when we should look at the other side of the table, like who's writing the code? We should write the code, meaning it would be read by other people. It will be understood by other people. It will be evolved by other people. Actually, keep in mind that code is often read, more often read than written, which is quite an important statistic because its readability should be very important. Uh, also, one very important thing is that when you are submitting a pull request, a change, if you submit something that's very big, 
it's going to take a lot of time. And the review is bit, will take longer. It's harder to review. It's harder to iterate on it because any change affects a handful of other files and related changes. So the best thing is to split it into smaller and meaningful changes. What's small, what's big, of course, it will change depending on the context, the project, etc. But that's a very important thing. And when reviewing the code, uh, don't be bossy, don't be judgmental. Uh, the language we use can be helpful, especially when we don't have a history of interaction of this in this way before. So instead of just saying, hey, you should have done that, you could say, hey, have you, have, have you considered doing X instead of Y? Or maybe Z is another option. So we should be always careful of how we say things. And lastly, don't forget testing scenarios and evidences. So if you have automated testing, which is a good thing, add it, say, hey, I did run this test. It is backing the change. So it does help the reviewer too. And last part, uh, some things I want to talk about in of how to kick off the process in the team or how to make the process better when you start reviewing in the team. So, well, first thing is to keep engineers autonomy. No one wants to have the feeling that they their work is not autonomous anymore. They don't have any power in the change they are doing. Everything is bureaucratic. So, yeah, first, avoid the gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is that person that intentionally or not becomes like the guardian of the code. So every code review, this person checks and has to approve for some reason. And this is bad for both the person and the team. Also map exceptional scenarios and work around. So let's say, for example, we implement a process that always requires an approval to land a code in production. Okay, looks very nice for me. But what if someone is on call or receives like a problem mid of the night and there's no one around to approve uh, code, uh, we should understand like what are the exceptional scenarios and workarounds that we have in place to make sure people still are able to fix problems when they appear. And lastly, it's related to both before, but code reviews should not be a high friction process. Code review should be part of a sequence of developing and putting code in the production, but it definitely should not feel as a high friction. So, okay, how to do that? So first, encourage open discussion in the team. We shouldn't start pointer fingering or um, we need to understand that this is a team process, as I said before. It's a good practice to often review pain points, evaluate results, how is it going, if it's the first time it's been implemented in the team, and actually iterate in the process. One good tip I would have here is recognize contributions. So people who take their time to do good reviews to help the teammates, help the projects moving forward, recognize that, make this a good example, and it would could be a motivation for other people who maybe are not willing to spend more time doing code reviews. Uh, also some ideas uh, to unblock if the team doesn't feel like they can absorb this process all at once. So we can start by selecting projects, selecting critical code paths, for example, in the example that I said like about banking, maybe you can start reviewing only code that affect the core banking instead of reviewing every single feature. And then as the team grows with the process, we can incorporate into every, one more things. Other examples, sampling reviews. So instead of reviewing every single thing, we can sample it preferentially randomly, so it doesn't seem like you are just reviewing someone specific uh, person's code. And another example, usually I don't see it applied much, but like you could even have non-blocking review. So you could, we could say, hey, yeah, every code should be reviewed, but after one, two, three days, I don't know what the time would be. Maybe the person is allowed to land it without a review. Uh, just some tips. Uh, they ideally we want all every single piece of code reviewed by someone to make sure the code has a good quality, but this could help to start and iterate over it. So to wrap up what we said today, we talked about what 
and what not, what is not cold review, some reasons to do cold review. Uh, we were understanding a bit the context of the team, cold goals, what we want to do cold reviews for. Uh, then we took a look like for what we should look when reviewing code, what to avoid looking at when reviewing code. Uh, remembering that code review is a team process. And also I shared some ideas to help to kick off this process within the team. Uh, thank you. Feel free to ping me on LinkedIn. This is also my GitHub here, although uh, I haven't populated it much. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. See you.